why you should be careful when averaging percentages. Let's say we run a candy factory and we survey some of our customers and we ask them a simple question. Do you like chocolates? Not surprisingly, 90% of the children who responded say that they love chocolates, compared to only 60% of the adults who say that they like chocolates. Can we conclude that 75% of the population likes chocolates? 75% would be the average of 90 and 60%. Unfortunately, the answer to this question would be no, with an exception that I will mention towards the end. Let's dive into the data and explore. In this example, we have surveyed 10 children. Nine of them like chocolates. This allows us to determine that 9 out of 10, or 90% of the children, like chocolates. On the other hand, we surveyed 20 adults. 12 of them like chocolate. Since 12 out of 20 adults like chocolate, we can claim that 60% of the adults like chocolates. Previously, we had suggested that we should average the 90 and 60% to obtain 75%. However, if we explore the bottom row, which contains the totals, we notice that we surveyed 30 people. 21 of those like chocolates. 21 over 30 provides 70%, which is not equivalent to the 75% we obtained with the simple average of percentages. The reason for this discrepancy occurs because the number of children and adults surveyed are not the same. However, if we would instead survey 10 adults, the same number as the children, we can still obtain 6 out of 10 who like chocolate, which is still 60%. Our simple average is 75%, and when we look at the totals, we also obtain 15 out of 20 people who like chocolate, which is 75%. In this case, the averaging of percentages would work. To summarize, if the sample sizes of both groups are the same, we can average the percentages. Let's see how this would apply to some real-world data. In this section, we will try to determine the percentage of population from two countries who are vaccinated. Let's look at China and Senegal, who have very different population sizes. China has over 1 billion people compared to Senegal, which has a few million. If we know the number of citizens who are fully vaccinated, we can determine the percentage of the population that is vaccinated. In this case, China has 91% compared to Senegal's 8.8%. If we average the percentages, we would estimate that about 50% of the population between these two countries are vaccinated. However, if we look at the bottom row with the totals, we learn that the population of China plus Senegal is slightly higher than China's population by itself. And the percentage of people vaccinated ends up at 90.2% which is slightly lower than China's 91% and far off from the almost 50% obtained from the percentage average. If we wanted to determine the percent of vaccination worldwide, we could not simply average the percentages of all countries. What other misconceptions would you like us to explore? Please leave a note in the comments below.